In this video, we'll look at the names and shapes of some common polynomial functions. And we'll take polynomial functions of several different degrees, and for each degree, we'll talk about the common name used for that type of polynomial function. And we'll show some examples in both equation form and graph form. So let's start with polynomial functions of degree zero. These are functions for which the exponent on x is no higher than zero. And that means there are our constant functions. And some examples are y equals three and y equals negative five. Notice we don't see the x term here. Uh, what do they look like in a graph? Well, they're straight lines, horizontal lines. There's y equals three and y equals negative five. So those are our degree zero polynomial functions, which we call constant functions. Let's move on to degree one here. These are the linear functions. And we have an exponent on x that is no higher uh, than one. So we have to see an x term for it to be considered a linear function. y equals x is the most basic example of this, but we can also have linear functions that look something like this, y equals negative two x plus five, in which case we have an x term and also a constant term. Now the graphs of this type of function are once again straight lines, uh, but this time we have slope. So those are the linear functions, degree one polynomial functions. What about degree two polynomial functions? Well, these are what we call quadratic functions, and I'm sure you've seen these before. On a graph, they are parabolas. So y equals x squared is the most basic example of a quadratic function or a degree two polynomial function. But remember, we can also have quadratic functions that look something like this, in which case we have an x squared term as well as an x term and a constant term. And once again, when we see these functions on a graph, they are parabolas. Now let's move on to degree three functions, perhaps something new here. Degree three polynomial functions have a name. We call them cubic functions. And the most basic cubic function, as you can probably imagine, is y equals x cubed. And we'll talk about what the graph of y equals x cubed looks like momentarily. But keep in mind, for a cubic function, you may also have an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. Now the graph of y equals x cubed looks like this. And on the right side here, it kind of reminds us of the graph of y equals x squared, right? But on the left side, it doesn't. This, uh, this side, we have y values that are negative. So why is that? Well, quickly, let's just take a look at y equals x squared here. Keep in mind with y equals x squared, when you're using positive x values, the resulting y values are also positive because you're just squaring positive values. And the same thing happens on the left side of the y-axis here. When we take negative values for y equals x squared and we square them, we still get positive values. So that's why both sides of this parabola are showing positive y values. But with y equals x cubed, yes, cubing positive values does give us positive y values, but cubing negative values gives us negative y values. And that's why the side of this graph on the left of the y-axis uh, is showing negative values here. Now keep in mind, the rate of change is different between y equals x squared and y equals x cubed. Specifically, once you start using values over one, y equals x cubed is steeper. It's because we're cubing these values instead of just squaring them. But near the origin here, where we're using values between negative one and one, cubing those values actually gives smaller y values than just squaring them. And that's why this graph kind of looks a little bit flatter here than x squared um, around the origin. Okay, if, in case you're wondering what this cubic function here looks like, here's a graph of it right there. So we see that we can have some more turns in the graph now that we're dealing with cubic functions. Let's move on to degree four. These functions are called quartic functions. And the most basic quartic function is y equals x to the power of four. But you can also have something like this, where in this case, we have an x cubed term and an x term and a constant term. We could also have an x squared term. It's just that the highest exponent on x is going to be four. Graphs of these, well, there's the graph of y equals x to the power of four. Notice once again, it kind of reminds us of y equals x squared, but the shape is slightly different. We have the graph increasing more rapidly uh, on the ends here, and around the origin there, it is flatter than y equals x squared. This is the graph of y equals negative x to the power of four plus four x cubed minus three x plus seven. 
lots of kind of curves or peaks happening there now. And we'll talk more about why that happens in the future. Finally, let's talk about our degree five polynomial functions. These are called quintic functions. The most basic is y equals x to the power of five, but once again, you can have other uh, terms here, other powers of x that are lower than five for the exponent. The graph of y equals x to the five looks like this, kind of reminds us a little bit of y equals x cubed, but uh, increasing more rapidly. It's steeper on the ends and flatter near the origin. And this the function here has a graph that looks like this. So once again, a lot more kind of peaks and valleys happening here now, lots of kind of turning around. And we'll talk more about that again in the, in the future. So perhaps you're wondering, um, how high can we go with the degree of a polynomial function? I mean, we just went up to degree five. Well, the truth is you can go as high as you want, but a couple things. First of all, there aren't really common names for high degree polynomials. I'm sure they exist and you can look them up, but we really don't use them that much. And in this course, we're going to spend most of our time working with polynomial functions that are degree five or less. And lastly, perhaps you're wondering how the coefficients affect the shape of the graph. So if you're dealing with perhaps a quintic function, how do the coefficients of x to the 5, x to the 4, x cubed, x squared, x, and how does that constant term affect the shape of the graph? Well, if you click in the link uh, in the description of this video, it'll take you to an applet where you can actually go and experiment with changing the coefficients for each term in several polynomial functions and see how that affects the shape of the graph. So let's leave it at that, a little bit of an introduction to the names and the shapes of some common polynomial functions.